Now I'm pleased to introduce Tiffany Longworth. Uh, Tiffany has joined us all the way from Portland, and she's a site reliability engineer at Puppet. An interesting thing, I, I like to travel, and when I travel for business, I, I usually try and check out different companies and places uh, around town, uh, wherever there's cool things going on in the city. And the last time I was in Portland, I, I toured Puppet's offices, and they're some of the coolest offices I, I've ever seen. So Tiffany is going to be talking about change management for humans. Please welcome Tiffany. Hi, I'm Tiffany Longworth. I'm a site reliable. I need to update the slide. I work at Puppet, and I've been rolling out changes there pretty much nonstop since I started five years ago. Some of them have been great successes that I'm proud of, and others have been catastrophic failures. Uh, but that's working in tech. Like, it's change is constant. You roll one thing out. If you're lucky, you get to iterate a couple times. And then you got to rip it out and start over because the business has pivoted onto something new. Uh, sometimes it's fine, but when it's bad, it is the worst. The people who are instigating the change hate the people resisting the change and vice versa. You end up with a lot of subverted processes and shadow IT, which means that the problem never actually gets fixed. And you're going to have to go back and do it again. And everyone's just emotionally exhausted and ugh, no one wants that. So the nerds that study change management have identified five prerequisites for a successful change. First and foremost, people need to know there's a problem and care about fixing it. They need to know how to fix it, be able to fix it, and we need to remind ourselves because we're all human. Uh, my favorite thing to do is the stakeholder interview before really getting going. Uh, any problem you're solving is going to involve other, any problem that's going to potentially be uh, unadopted is going to involve other people. Uh, who are the people on the edges of your problem space. Talk to them and find out what they think are the problems in the area and what they think are the rooms for improvement. Work together, because you can't do this alone. Uh, also, allow your change to be fallible. If you can't make it better, faster, stronger for them, they're not gonna wanna pick it up and do it. So make those promises and don't, don't tilt at a windmill that you're not gonna be able to do. Uh, once you have interviewed all your stakeholders and it's time to roll out to the rest of the company, oh, right, uh, come back to them after you've found out what they want and let them know what are the things you will be able to do and that you won't be able to do and just be honest about why you can't do the things. Uh, that'll build evangelists instead of enemies. When you're rolling out your change, start with the tigers. What are the terrifying things that are going to happen if we do not do this? Uh, you're really going for emotional impact here. I know we're a bunch of... Uh, computer nerds, so like emotions are weird, but people who are sleeping uh, won't hear how to avoid the jaws of death. Similarly, what are the nice things that'll happen if they go along with this change? Uh, and I'm very sad that people don't actually care about data quality. What they really care about is having a better day at work because the customer wasn't yelling at them because you were able to deliver on time because you didn't have to go back and do a bunch of rework. Make it personal. Uh, once you have pointed out the tigers in laying in wait and pointed people to their puppy and kitten-laden future, uh, then and only then do you move on to the knowledge, the how-to, the details. Uh, never, ever start here. Uh, you want to point out a success case, preferably someone they know, so they can go, I want to be like Mike, uh, and lay out what makes this person successful. Uh, you want to be as detailed as possible when it comes to the knowledge section so people can see themselves going step by step through each thing. Uh, the more they can envision themselves doing the change, the more it'll stick in their head and the more successful your change is going to be. That being said, the easiest things to remember are the simplest. Uh, Again, we really like complex, cool, fiddly things. That's why we came here. Uh, but even the nerdiest of us get tired, and we don't want a run book. We want something that's intuitive, uh, especially if it's not our little Rube Goldberg machine. Uh, so if you have some friends in UX, it's really fun to sit with them and talk about like human systems and stuff. I recommend it. And now that they know how to do it and they're able to do it, how do you keep this alive once you've rolled it out? You want to show metrics? Metrics aren't just about like making the business people happy. It's about reminding everybody else, like, look, we had a problem. 
and it's getting better, and you're part of it. Keep going, right, up to the right, that way. Um, uh, you want, it's also a commitment, so you want to iterate. Uh, go ahead and just schedule time. Bring back those stakeholders you talked to originally and ask them, like, what can be better? Help them groom your backlog. Uh, don't forget the newbies. Uh, if they can't find out how to do this thing, uh, it's going to die a slow death. And bonus points, the more new person friendly that your documentation is, you're going to get like lots of fresh, enthusiastic people who are saying, yeah, that thing, I read about it, I know how to do it, and they will help be evangelists for you. Uh, this has been Change Management for Humans. I'm still Tiffany. Thank you, Ohio.